his first version in the mid-1930s had given Katharine Hepburn her biggest pre-MGM success, and it was thought that a Technicolor remake with June Allison in the role of Joe, which uh, is, most people agree, actually Miss Louisa May Alcott herself, would be a natural. Well, it turned out to be just that, and though you will get few arguments from film buffs that June's performance outshines or eclipses Catherine's, they both have their champions. Never having seen either of them until this week when I screened the movie you're about to see, I can't make comparisons. And in the 1930s, when Catherine Hepburn's version came out, I was not to be about to give my 10 cents to something called Little Women, who wanted to watch a bunch of those. Well, I'm glad that I saw this one, and I plan now to take a look at Catherine's one of these days. All the ladies whose names you will see shortly on our screen will be familiar to anybody who's ever watched a Metro-Golden-Mayer movie before. And uh, I think, however, we should talk about the men just briefly because they don't have a lot to do, but there are some interesting things to say. Rosano Brazzi made his American debut in uh, this movie as uh, Professor Bear. You'll meet him during the final third of our film. Crusty old wonderful Sir C. Aubrey Smith finished his long and distinguished career in films with this movie. He died shortly after at the age of 85. Richard Stapley, who plays Baker in our movie, uh, later changed his name to Richard Weiler. I don't know much about either of them, but he's very fine in our movie and did a lot of other good things. And uh, as far as Peter Lawford and Leon Ames are concerned, this was just another chapter in their long MGM contract period. It's a great, great fun to watch movie and takes its time. And it, well, actually, the, the tip-off is the American sampler uh, on which the credits are seen as the the uh, period music comes in. So let's enjoy Louisa May Alcott's Little Women, Metro, 1949. Our movie is Little Women, the 1949 version from Metro Goldwyn Mayer. And of all the ladies that I've seen on screen so far, I've got to tell you my favorite is rich and vinegary old Lucille Watson as uh, Aunt March. I love her waspishness. That's not to denigrate the gentility of all the other ladies particularly Marmy, played beautifully by Mary Astor in a role that's similar to the mother role she had in Meet Me in St. Louis a few years before, and of course the March girls. Elizabeth Taylor takes a little bit of doing as a blonde. You're not used to that, but uh, it turns out to be okay. And yes, they're finally letting Margaret O'Brien grow up a little at Metro. Janet Lee as Amy is all peaches and cream, as she was in all her Metro movies of that period, and also on most of the fan magazines at that time, because she was on all of them, sometimes with Tony Curtis, her then boyfriend, whom she would marry a couple of years later, and from that issue, of course, or that uh, uh, union, came the issue of Jamie Lee Curtis, and we're glad of it. And, of course, June Allison as the spunky Joe, or the main focus of our story because, as I indicated earlier, most scholars agree that she is Miss Alcott herself. Little Woman was written by Miss Alcott in two parts in 1868 and 69. It was a hit from the moment it left the printing press. The first sold 60,000 copies in the first year, and like our movie, many delightful uh, sequences, but not a great deal of actual plot. I will say that for a family that is supposed to be as impecunious as the marches, with father away at war and all, they are the most beautifully dressed and coiffed group of ladies I've ever seen. But we'll just give them the benefit of the doubt and say they were all good seamstresses and hairdressers and that the Metro-Golden-Mayer studio system had nothing to do with it. Did Miss Alcott write anything besides Little Women, you ask? Yes, as a matter of fact, she did. But why don't we get back to her biggie, the big hit, Little Women, and then we'll talk about those later. Back now, Metro-Golden-Mayer's Little Women. Our movie is Little Women, with more hugging and sentiment and tugging of the heartstrings than you're likely to see in several weekends together on the Family Film Festival. But then, of course, you weren't expecting Die Hard, too, were you? June Allison, during this period, was maybe MGM's busiest actress and certainly the most versatile one. From period skirts and hairdos, or what's left of her hairdo in our movie, her next one would be The Stratton Story, returning to this century, and uh, Jimmy Stewart's arms as the wife of the great uh, baseball pitcher. And before this, she had just sung Thou Swell, Thou Witty in Words and Music, the story of Rogers and Hart. Delightful performance in that. Before that was Good News as a co-ed campus and the Three Musketeers as a lady in waiting. Waiting, I presume, for whatever Metro had to throw at her next. Fortunately, she could do it all, and unlike a great many actresses of the time at her studio and others, she did not put, a pretty, put her pretty foot down and say, I will not do such and such a role. They didn't have to put her on suspension. She did them all. 
She did them all well. Some were turkeys, the movies, and some were classics, and she did well with both of them. Peter Lawford, as Laurie, seems understandably confused as to why Joe just wants to be his pal. Uh, the ladies on screen and off in those days were not resisting Mr. Uh, Mr. Lawford very much, but everybody stuck to Miss Alcott's script. That's the way it was written, and I have a hunch that he'll marry into the family anyway. It's more than a hunch because, of course, I've seen the movie. Mention of just three more character ladies before we uh, get back to the movie. Hannah is Elizabeth Patterson, whom I always have loved, and in the New York sequences, Mrs. Kirk and Sophie, who worked for Mrs. Kirk, Connie Gilchrist and Ellen Corby, doggone right, each with probably no more than maybe a couple of days' work at Metro during 1948-49, but delightfully welcome nonetheless. Back now to Little Women. Little Women, the uh, children's classic loved by little girls ever since it was published in 1868, and first film with Katherine Hepburn, Frances D., Joan Bennett, and Jean Parker as the March Girls with Spring Byington as Marmee, and Edna May Oliver, they tell me, as... Uh, Aunt Marsh. I may get it out just to look and see what she does with those wonderful lines. It was directed by George Cukor. This one is by Mervyn Leroy. The late Mervyn Leroy was not especially known for his sentiment, although he did do that sort of thing. But Little Caesar, I was a fugitive from a chain gang, Quo Vadis, and later he took over for John Ford and did Mr. Roberts. That's the way I remember him. Rosano Brazzi, making his American film debut in our movie, certainly doesn't seem to appear to be the dashing Italian that he would be in uh, later films, or the dashing Frenchman, if you want to talk about South Pacific. Uh, he was uh, Catherine Hepburn's lover in Summertime and had interesting outings, too, in The Barefoot Contessa and Three Coins in the Fountain. He is in his 70s now, but still takes an occasional job. I asked earlier if Miss Alcott, Louisa May Alcott, the writer of Little Women, had written anything else. Well, yes, two sequels, in fact. Little Men in 19, or 1871 and Joe's Boys in 1886, both continuing the sequence of uh, events for the March family. They didn't do as well, but they did okay. Her father was uh, her tutor. She didn't have formal training, but friends of her father, two fellows that you may have heard of, Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau, were said to be responsible for some of her career uh, successes as well. She was a nurse during the Civil War, uh, wrote children's stories that led to being a magazine editor for children and then Little Women. Let's get back now to the conclusion from 1949's MGM version. All right, George, a rainbow over the old homestead. They pulled out all the stops in 1949. The Slipper and the Rose with Richard Chamberlain is coming up on Channel 5 tonight, and I highly recommend it to you, and I thank you for being with us tonight. <laughs>